Okay, in this example we're going to look at how we deal with angled projectiles. So angled projectiles are projectiles that are launched up from the ground typically, and they could be launched off of a cliff as well at an angle. But let's start with a similar, simpler one where that's launched off the ground. And a couple of things to note about angled projectiles. What changes from our horizontal problems? Well, what changes is if I launch something up at an angle, such as a soccer ball, at a velocity of 17 meters per second, 49 degrees above the horizontal, vi or v naught y is no longer zero. So I can't have that condition when I have something launched at an angle. There are a couple things that we are going to be able to use, though. The fact that on its way up and then back down, its vertical motion undergoes a change in velocity from positive to negative, which means I have a velocity in the y direction of zero at the peak or top of its flight. And we also have to use some vector arithmetic or our vector math to look at the components, the x and y components of our velocity vector in order to solve the problem in the x and y directions, just like we did with horizontals. So let's take a look and work through it. All right, we have a soccer ball kicked off the ground at an angle of 49 degrees from the horizontal at a velocity of 17 meters per second. I want to know A, how high does it get? So it's maximum height, so delta y at its peak. That's its peak. And how much time does it take to get there? And then in B, I want to know how far does it travel horizontally? And that is the range. The range is, you know, if you're going to launch it, how far does it actually travel side to side? So let's start by looking at the um, first part, the peak. Now, what do I do here? Well, before I can even start the problem, I need to figure out what are my initial x and y velocities of the uh, velocity vector. So I'm going to take that vector, 17 meters per second magnitude at 49 degrees, and I'm going to break it into my x component and my y component. And so this is really v naught x and v naught y. Okay, so we got to do a little trig. So, so I know that v naught x is going to be whatever v is, the magnitude of v, times the cosine of theta, which in this case is 17 cosine of 49 degrees meters per second, and v naught y is going to be the magnitude of v sine of theta, which is 17 meters per second, sine of 49 degrees. So i got to solve those out, and if I solve those out, I will get v naught y is 12.8 three zero meters per second and that's in the j direction right I want to write it as a vector v naught x is 11.153 meters per second and that's in the i direction okay just so that I make sure I know it is a vector it does have a direction okay all right so now I can set up my problem. So let's build a table, xy table. I know that ax is 0, ay is negative 9.8. OK, now v naught x is 11.153, v naught y, 12.830. And I want to find delta y. And that's all I know. OK, how can I set this up? Well, I don't have enough information in the x direction to find time, because I would need to know delta x. And I don't know that, because delta t is what connects these two. So somehow, I'm going to have to use, let me get that over a little bit. I'm going to have to use my y information to find delta y. So we're, this is where using the hint that vy at the top is 0. So in this problem, I'm looking at solely from launch point to peak. 
So I can call V final when it reaches its peak. So using this information, now I can apply the third equation. Because I know Vy final, I know V initial, and I know A. I can solve for delta Y. So Vy final squared equals V y initial squared plus 2 a y times delta y. So if I solve this for delta y, I get v y squared minus v initial squared over 2 a sub y. And if I substitute in, I get 0 meters per second squared minus 12 point meters per second squared over 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And if I chug that away, I should get a maximum height of 8.398 meters. Okay, so what if I want to know the time it takes to get to the peak? Well, if I want to know delta t, I still have a lot of y information, not a lot of x. So let's use y. Uh, the first equation is the easiest, v final, v initial, and a. So I'm going to do that up here. So vy equals v not y plus a y delta t. So if I simplify this, delta t is v y minus v initial y over a y, which is minus 12.830 meters per second over 9.8 meters per second squared. So I get the time it takes. Now this is to reach the top. Okay, make sure the hardest part with angle projectiles, I think, is is the ability or the the possibility of mixing directions. So make sure or applying something that is for the first half of the problem when it reaches its peak to the full problem. So make sure we keep these separate. All right, what do I get? I get 1.3 uh, oh nine seconds. So that's the time it takes to reach its, its top. And there's a reason I'm doing that because I want to show you some continuity uh, when we reach when we solve the second problem. Okay, so second problem now, we want to know how far the range is if it travels horizontally. How far does it travel horizontally? If it goes in the air and then lands on the ground. And in this problem, we'll make the assume that, assumption that it lands at the same height. So my delta y is zero. Now in future videos, I will show you how to solve it if delta y isn't zero, but let's keep that for now. So x and y info again for the full range. Now the initial velocities are the same, 11.153 meters per second, and I know that stays constant. V not y is 12.830 meters per second. The a's are the same, a y equals minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, in this case, I don't know delta x, I want to find that. But before I can do that, I need time. Because to solve for delta x, I need v naught x times delta t. I have this, I don't have this. So I know delta y is 0. So again, I have the y information I can use to find the x. So let's use, I know a y, I know v naught, I know delta y. Let's solve for t with the second. So delta y is v naught y delta t plus one half a y delta t squared. And because this is zero, it becomes a more simple uh, equation to solve. I don't have to use the quadratic formula because one of my t's will be will cancel out. So zero equals v naught t delta t. So I'm going to send this. Well, let's just factor out the delta t. Delta t squared. So I take out a delta t because that'll equal to zero. So I get minus v naught y equals one half a y delta t squared. Multiplied by 
two, and then divide by a y, and then let's square root it. So if I do all that, jazz, square root of two times minus 12.83 over minus 9.8. I'm cutting some corners here because I don't want this video to be forever. Should get a delta t of 2.618 seconds goes here and then now I can set, set it up here and solve for my delta x so my vx is 1.153 meters per second times my time 2.618 seconds seconds cancel and I get a range delta x of let's see and solve that out Twenty nine point one nine eight. So let's do twenty nine point two zero meters. Okay, want to show you one thing that makes a connection here between the the top and the bottom, or the total and the top. If I have a projectile that lands at the same height, the total time it was in the air was two point six one eight seconds. The time it was in the air for half was 1.309 seconds. So if I take that and double it, I get 2.618 seconds. So there is symmetry in the upward motion and the downward motion. We talked about that a little with uh, free fall. Uh, and you can use that as a hint for solving projectile problems. But this is only true when... Delta Y is zero. If delta Y is not zero, you cannot use that hint. And that's why I didn't want to show it to you exclusively as a problem solving technique. But it is kind of interesting to note that it does come out. So that's example number one. I'm going to show you a, a more challenging example in the next video.